all across ocean and land in common tone oh man is the pilgrimage to Mecca fifth pillar of Islam in the footsteps of Muhammad the last prophet of Allah bow down bow down and praise Allah الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين With the foundation of Hajj which is the deeds of our hearts we reach the level where a person is performing Al-Ihram Al-Ihram is a physical state that a Muslim becomes in For men there are certain criteria for a person to have the state of Al-Ihram The main thing that we see, the main appearance that you would see men are wearing two sheets of clothing and for women, their ihram is in their face and their hands. But for the men, they wear these two sheets of clothing that should remind the Muslim that this is basically our life. This is what our life is worth. What we take after this life is nothing but our deeds, whether it's the good deeds or the bad deeds. And that's why it's something that we need to witness, that this is something that we would face, all of us. We have to face the moment of death. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, no fleeing away from it. كل نفس ذائقة الموت. Every soul shall taste death. And this is a reminder for us. It's also something that is meant for the Muslim when he is going to this journey to leave behind all the different things that is attached to the hearts. Things that are attached to the hearts, whether things that we see with our own eyes, things that we hear, things that we possess things that we have as ownership. And at the moment, at the moment of Al-Ihram, we put this aside. Nothing of what we own that would make a person look like a rich person or poor, that would have some form of differentiation between one another, all of that is left behind so that the hearts are attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. There's no more form of arrogance that a person would get into his heart as a result of having different clothing than from someone else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise. So we need to witness that. And a person when he would even remove what covers the head, which is the rituals of al-ihram, for men not to cover their head with something that, that they would wear. This is also meant, there is a wisdom behind it, and that is for the Muslim to be humble. And it's all deeds done by the heart. For the person to have this khudu' and humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That a person would humble oneself to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And this is the meaning of abd. This is the meaning of being slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the essence of ubudiyya. This is the essence of worship. Is to humble ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many things physically that we do in our religion of Islam. That's supposed to remind us of this act of worship done by the heart. When we make sujood. Prostrate and put our heads which is the most honorable part of our bodies, we put it on the ground. This is physically done. But many of us, we ignore or forget that it's not just the head that is meant to be on the ground. It's also our hearts intended for it to have sujood, to prostrate, to humble itself, to feel the need that it's in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And unless we witness that, we are missing so much of the great meanings of hajj and the acts of worship. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah when he was asked would the heart perform an act of prostration? He said yes. The heart prostrates in such a way that it never raises itself from it whatsoever till the moment of death. This is the state of the heart of the believers. It's always in that state of humbleness which is basically what prostration is. The same thing when we put the clothing of al-Ihram. How can a person have that state of the heart which is the state of humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you would find such a person committing sins or forgetting about the purpose of this journey or abusing others or not repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it's not just the physical acts it's what's behind these physical acts that's supposed to be done with our hearts when a Muslim is refrained from having perfume on scent, something that would make a person smells Nice, which is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, to men to be or to have outside their homes. 
In ihram, it is not permissible for a Muslim to put any form of a scent on one's body after being in the state of al-ihram. Before, when a person is taking a shower, after that, a person can put oil or a scent on one's skin, not on the clothing of al-ihram. As Aisha radiallahu anha, she used to do that to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa There's nothing wrong with the smell staying after being in the state of al-ihram from the time that a person put the oil or the perfume before being in the state of al-ihram. Nothing wrong with that. But to put, to intentionally put some perfume or oil on one's skin or one's clothing of al-ihram after being in the state of al-ihram, this is not permissible whatsoever. Why is that? Because this is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and this is what we need to witness first. If we don't see the wisdom behind it, meaning when it comes to the deeds of the heart, one of the good deeds that is at all times is to be in state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And state of submission would not be perfectly done unless a person would do things and he doesn't know why he's doing it. Otherwise, if we know the reason Behind every single act that we do, where is the submission comes in place? A person would see the benefit of it. But we need to be in state of submission. Submission to the creator of the heavens and the earth that we know with certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and we do not know. We do not know what is good and what is bad for us. We only get to know that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what a Muslim is. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said in the Quran, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْقِتَالُ وَهُوَ كُرْهُ لَكُمْ وعسى أن تكره شيئا وهو خير لكم وعسى أن تحب شيئا وهو, وهو, وهو شر لكم والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون that fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been prescribed unto you be, become obligatory on you and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and maybe that you would dislike something and it's good for you and maybe that you would like something and desire something and it's evil for you then how would you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and you do not know. We need to say that with our tongues and with our hearts that we do not know when it comes to the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, I can say that I know versus what you know as human beings towards one another. But when it comes to the human being and his relationship with the creator of the heavens and the earth, we know nothing. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that bestowed this knowledge unto us. When he created us subhanahu wa ta'ala, we were created knowing nothing. We don't even remember the moment that we were born. And who is the one that made us have these types of knowledge and different types of meanings that present in our talks and our hearts and so on? It's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one that guided the believers to see the truth and to be steadfast on the deen of Islam. That's why a Muslim need to humble oneself to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And that's what we witness when we are performing the ihram. When a person would perform the ihram, it is forbidden for a Muslim to have any form of sexual desires with one's wife. Anything of that, even the touch. Why is that? Because this is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, although it's permissible before that. But once a person performs the state of al-ihram, it is not permissible till the person is relieved from al-ihram with the different rulings of hajj and umrah. A person should witness that. That nothing of the attachment of the heart should be there except to be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do the acts of worship. This is not the time to relax. This is not the time to be indulged in things that are permissible for us to do that would take us away from the meanings of hajj. We need to do the best we can to do the acts of worship in the most perfect way. Many people, they waste their time during the journey of hajj. Whether it's to be in the stores shopping, or whether to be just talking with others, even if they're not committing sins, even if they're not committing <coughs> sins of backbiting and the like of that, still, when a person speaks to others, this is permissible. But when it becomes too much, when a person wastes these precious moments, which is only a few days, in things that would take away from the rewards of the person, then this is something that we need to review with ourselves. Why? Because we need to have the hearts attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person is deprived while in the state of al-ihram from things that might be necessities at some times, how can that person be indulged in what is evil, which is sins, which is not something that we might need in our life, 
Sins are not needed. Sins brings harm to oneself in this life and in the hereafter. So this is something that needs to be witnessed and a person needs to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone while performing the state of al-ihram. Also for women, their ihram in, is in their faces and their hands, yes. It means that the woman should not wear naqab. And the naqab is something that would be fit to her face. There is nothing wrong if she would cover her face with something that comes from the head down. And this is what the wives of the Prophet ﷺ used to do as the hadith of Umm Salama radiallahu anha. That whenever the, uh, those who are riding or those who are in the journey of Hajj would pass uh, by them, she said radiallahu anha that they would put down their veil over their faces so that nobody would see them. And this is what needs to be done in the journey of Hajj. If a Muslim woman, she is alone, she's away from the eyes of men, yes, she can relieve herself and she can expose her face. But if she is in the midst of the men, if she is covering her face, then she should continue covering her face, but not with the naqab that fits the face, something that comes down from the top of her head that covers the face. Even if it touches the face, there is no harm to this according to the opinions of the people of knowledge. And the hands the same way, for her not to wear gloves. She can have it underneath her khimar, for example, right? But she is not to wear gloves. This is the ihram of the women. Of course, she's staying away from perfume and having relations with her husband and the things that comes before that. All of that is the same as men. But with the clothing that she would wear normally, this is something that is for the women. She also witnessed that she is not doing whatever she wants to do. She is doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do. Making sure that we submitting ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are busy in matters of dhikr. And it shows that this is the nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants women to be in. For them to perform modesty, for them to perform the hijab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to perform, this is fits the nature of the women. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it an obligation. And that's why when we get to the acts of worship, we should not seek our own pleasure. We're seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So the state of al-ihram, that we sleep and we wake up and we eat and we go to the bathroom, all of that in the state of al-ihram, something that should be always present in our hearts. When we are physically in that state, the heart should be in the same state and that is to be attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To remember that this life is nothing but a journey. And then after this life, the matter is either Jannah, paradise, or the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those of the people of Jannah. The state of Al-Ihram, done physically, it's very important to learn that. But we need to do the deeds of the hearts. We need to have the sincerity, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the humbleness, the submission, following the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and to be in the state of dhikr, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته The last prophet of Allah